Uh, we were having a discussion on uh, using the skew for V cuts and ingrain cuts on Wood Central. For those who haven't been there, it's www.woodcentral.com. A very nice place to go. Anyway, we were discussing that uh, when using a skew, do you push it straight in or do you arc the cut in? I do it uh, two or three different ways. And I wanted to show you this is a really, really funky piece of wood. I don't know if I'll even be able to cut it clean, but we're going to find out. When you push the tool straight in, you'll notice how the wood comes across the tool at a kind of a blunt angle. By arcing the tool in, it actually is even more blunt to some extent. So we'll make a quick cut and we'll see how that works. Not bad, I cleaned it up a little bit over the original cut, which was done with a not necessarily super sharp spindle gouge. Let's go a little deeper. Now when you're doing this cut, for those who are new at using a spindle or a, using a skew for this kind of cut, when looking at it from the top, there's a very slight gap between the tool edge and the wood. So I start the cut rubbing the bevel, and as I go in, I make sure that it's not touching up here. If it's touching on this part, of course you'll get a catch because it'll pull the tool backwards. We're getting a fairly clean cut. Now one day it occurred to me while doing this that since the cutting edge is this angle, if I start with the handle very high and come in from the bottom, you'll notice now the wood is really sheer cutting across the tool. Now let's, let's try a cut from this angle. Now I do have to raise the tool rest of this cut because I want to end up on the center line. Again, just take a very, very light cut, slowing down the cut as you get toward the middle. Now that's quite a bit cleaner, still not really clean, so we're going to try one other trick. We're going to take some good old Johnson's paste wax and lubricate the surface, and we'll try it again. That's not bad. It could be sanded out. It could be better. I, what I could do in this case, in a worst case scenario, is to soak it with uh, lacquer. Let the lacquer penetrate. That firms up this surface. Not much better. This wood is really pretty funky. I'll take a minute and put some lacquer on it and then I'll show you how that works. Okay, I've soaked it in lacquer and I've given it a little time to dry. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to increase my speed a little bit. I can still feel it tearing in the middle. Now that is quite a bit cleaner. It was a fairly deep tear out, so let's try one more pass. There we go. Not bad. That would be sanded out pretty easily. It's not as clean as I'd really like, but this is a really rotten piece of wood. So I think that's pretty satisfactory. Well, since Keith brought up the topic of uh, skew practice, this is a practice technique that I play with 
One thing that's important on the skew is not to push the bevel very hard. You want to be very light on the bevel. So what I'm going to try to do is I cut this with a parting tool and I'm going to see how thin I can make it. Uh, both trying to keep the sides parallel, which is really good for learning to aim the skew, and also trying to keep the pressure off the bevel because too much pressure will simply break this off. So let's see how we can do this morning. Kind of got to get a feel for the wood. You got to get a feel for aiming the bevel down. Right now it's very, very slightly tapered, thicker in the middle. So I'm going to go back and I, what I do is I continue to rub the bevel. See how it's rubbing right now? And then I'll do is move the handle out a little bit more and make another pass. <laughs> Now to force myself to aim it, we'll switch sides. We'll go from one side to the other. Arc our way down in. And I go to this side. Now you'll notice that I can actually flex the wood. So you have to be quite, it has to be a very sharp skew. It's thicker in the middle. Again, I want to go back and thin it out. Now we'll try the other side. This is good practice for turning left-handed and right-handed also. You can hear that noise. That means I was pushing on the bevel too hard. Woo. That flexes. Go back to the right-hand side. Start your cut extremely lightly. Particularly on this outer edge. And you can see we're we're really really thin. I probably won't be able to go one more pass. This is a piece of two by four, which is pretty funky. But we'll try it. Ah, there it goes. I put just a little too much pressure on it and broke it off. You can see that's extremely thin, but this is really good practice for cutting with the skew. Of course, you can practice with it thick. Now to do V cuts, you go in from one side, aim the bevel in the direction of the cut. Now I always learn to arc the cut down, and I think that's a little bit more controlled cut in my own opinion. Keith was saying goes, you could go straight in, which also works. Which one cuts the cleanest? Can't tell you for sure. When you have a good sharp tool, they both cut pretty clean. That was pushing straight in. Let's see what happens when I arc it in. both about the same. So whichever one you get comfortable with. <laughs> 